Hello everybody and welcome to Coachship's YouTube channel. I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to be solving the problem. Zenny and Simple Sum whose difficulty level is simple and the prerequisites require our basic set data structure. So hi this is your educator Anj and I hope you enjoy this video. So let us move on to the problem statement. Okay. So first of all, it is my humble request to all of you to kindly read and understand the problem statement properly before moving on to the solution. Okay, so now let me summarize this particular problem statement. So, so basically we have an array of n integers of size like of n length. Now, our task is to find the sum of all distinct positive integers and all distinct negative integers. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Firstly, Consider this any sequence, consider this 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 1. So what do you mean by distinct integers that all our multiple occurring elements are only counted as 1, like are only counted once. So this 3 ones will be counted as a single 1. This 2 twos will be counted as a single 2. This 2 threes will be counted as a single 3. The 4 is counted as a 4 and both the minus 1s are counted as a single minus 1. So this is my original array and this becomes my distinct array. So all the numbers are occurring only once in this particular array. And now our goal is to find the sum of all the positive integers in this distinct array and sum of negative numbers in this distinct array. So yeah, that is what the question is saying. Now let us discuss the test cases in order to understand this. So consider this test case. So it is my minus 1. Again, I have minus 1 minus 2 as my negative numbers and I have 1 as my positive number. We can simply discard 0 because 0 won't affect any sum. 0 plus anything is itself. So this 2 minus 1s are considered as single minus 1 and minus 2 and this considers 1. So the sum of these two, this is the distinct array and it becomes minus 3. And sum of this is still 1. Hence our answer is 1 comma minus 3. Similarly, in this also, consider this minus 4. 5 and both the 3's are counted as 1. So my answer is 4 plus 5 plus 3, which is 12. And my negative sum is minus 1 plus minus 2, so which is minus 3. And hence the answer is 12 power minus 3. So let us move on to the approach how to solve this kind of problems. Now let's discuss the approach to solve this particular problem. So as you know, our goal is first to get all the distinct integers and then once we got the distinct integers, we can just simply add them and get a final answer. So, in C++, there's a data structure in standard template library called as the set. So, what does set data structure do? It stores the, all the unique distinct integers. So, we can use set to store the numbers that like traverse the array and to store all the distinct integers. So, we can store. So, similarly, this type of data structure is also present in Python language. And even it takes all the numbers and removes all the duplicates and only the single occurrence of the number is same. So the approach for this question is as simple it can be. You just take the array, convert the, like traverse the array, iterate and insert the elements into a set. And then you finally take the positive elements, you take all the positive elements, you take all the negative elements and you add them to get your final answer. So yeah, that is the approach for this problem. Now let's see how do we code this particular thing. Okay, so now let's discuss the code for the particular question. So, I just took my first long long integers in order to prevent any kind of overflow errors. Now, for t test cases, I took n and I declared all the variables necessary. Then, for n length of array, I inserted the element of array and then I inserted that particular element into the set so that we could obtain a distinct set of elements and after obtaining so once I iterated through all the elements in the array and inserted them in the set, now we have all the distinct set of elements. Now we could just simply initialize the two variables, one for negative sum and one for positive sum. And then we keep on iterating in the set and we check if that particular element is positive, then we iterate in the positive sum, otherwise we take it in the negative sum. And finally, we print the final answer. So this is the C++ code for the following. Now let me also show you the Python code. So in Python, we also do the same thing. We just take input, we take input the array, we initialize a set, and we start traversing the array, and we add the elements into the set. So this way, we have all the distinct elements, and then we do the same thing. We initialize two sums, 
and we, if the sum is positive, we add them in S1, otherwise we add them in S2 and we have printed the final answer. So let me just check whether our code is running properly on the sample test cases or not. So as you can see, we got a required answer. Now let us submit and check whether this code is running properly. Now as you can see, we got the correct answer and the solution is correct. Also, now I would like to point out the mistakes that are made by the people. So people generally don't use this set data structure sometimes. It is always advisable to use set or some kind of data structure when, whenever you want to find distinct set of elements because it becomes so easier. So I will show you one of the codes which someone submitted and was a wrong answer because the person did not use set data structure. Instead, he wrote his own manual code to remove dupli duplicate elements. Now, I'm not saying that is wrong, but yeah, that could result in like the writing of this code is complex and it could result in a lot of mistakes. So why to indulge in a lot of mistakes when you could use a simple data structure such as set to your convenience? So yeah, this is one example that one shouldn't follow and one should follow this type of example. Yeah, so thank you. I hope you liked the video. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.